Hey, so my name is Clive Bowers, for those who don't know me. Um, I have a beautiful wife, Courtney Bowers, and a beautiful daughter, Riley. Um, she's almost five months now. And basically, this video is just to show and share about the vision we have and the exciting new journey we're taking on planting a church. I think the best way to start is to say how this all came about, why we're planting a church, how do we feel called to this. Well, it's over the last few years, my wife and I have actually had multiple conversations about what it would be like to plant a church, and we kind of thought of it as a pipeline dream when I'm like 105 years old with 60 years experience in ministry, and that's when we're going to be ready to plant a church. But actually, we kept having these conversations over and over, but we kept pushing it aside. And then last year in lockdown, around the start of lockdown, my wife and I actually sat down and put a proposal together of what if we had to plant a church right now, at our current age and as we are, what would it look like? And so we actually put this whole proposal together. We had different questions we were asking, different things we were dreaming about and a vision and all sorts of things. And then we put it aside. And then it got to the end of the year, last year, and we're really seeking God's guidance on where He wants to take us and what He wants to do. And while I qualified, um, through Cape, Cape Town Baptist Seminary, and now I'm a qualified pastor. And we were actually sitting around the table with my gran and my sister and my brother-in-law and my family. And my gran actually turned to us and said, hey, Clive, you qualified. Angela, you qualified. Gareth, you qualified. Why don't you guys start a church? And so we kind of listened to it in a bit of jest. We were kind of like laughing a bit. And I was actually sharing the story at one of our staff meetings last year. And Uncle Basil approached me afterwards. And he said, Clive, I seriously want you to consider putting that proposal together. And I actually said to him, well, Uncle Basil, we already have a proposal together. And slowly but surely, we st started to see the wheels turning. We could see God's plan coming together. And we knew, and we prayed about it, we prayed about it, and we had this absolute peace that this is where God wants us, and this is what God wants us to do, and this is the journey He's going to take us on. So it's my wife, myself, my sister, and brother-in-law, Angela and Gareth, um, they also qualified pastors, and they're going to be joining the team, and they're going to be working full-time as well in the church. And so this is how it all came about. We also connected with Rian Niemand, another great pastor, and he connected us to ARC, which is an association of related churches, which is basically an organization that helps different churches plant in the most successful way possible. They give you different things you have to follow, different steps you have to take. There's a support structure. They help a bit financially. Um, they, so they're basically going to come on board with us and help us, and they really have been helping us on this process of getting established. So that's how this all came about. But our vision, our vision is to be a culturally relevant church that never compromises on the Word of God and the Scriptures that God has to be the hands and feet of Jesus, to meet the physical needs and the spiritual needs of our community. Because we believe that that is what we're called to do. Called to be the hands and feet, but to provide for the physical needs because we have to have faith and deeds. That's what we're called to as believers. And we're also called to make God known to the nations. We're called to preach His word, preach His message, and preach His gospel to as many people as possible. And that's what we want to do. The scriptures will be our authority, will be our guide, and will be our way of getting God out into the community. And we want to be involved in so many different things. Why is this our vision? Because it's what we're called to. We have a burning desire in each and every one of our hearts to see lives change in the community, to see our congregation become the hands and feet, where they are meeting the needs, where they are the ones preaching, where they are the ones serving, where they are the ones ministering to kids in the community, we want to see this family of believers come together and serve out of that love that they have from Christ and show that love to the community. And how are we going to do it? Well, number one, like I said, we are going to be preaching the Word and we're going to be preaching with the authority of the Scriptures because this, the Scripture is the authority of God and it guides us in everything we do. We want to have outreaches where we are going to meet the needs of the community and we also want to have a congregation where there's a culture of acceptance where all people, no matter what their backgrounds are and where they come from, they can come and encounter Jesus and the love of Jesus in a real way. A culture of service where they are going to be physically living out their faith. And then just one of love, where we can just really be there for each other as a body of believers, where we can take care of each other and meet each other at their place of need. You see, we want to love God, we want to love people, but we also just want to live it out. 
And that's basically what we want to do. So our identity is Cedar Hill. And just so you can understand where it comes from, I want to read a passage. It's Isaiah 41, verse 17 to 20. The poor and the needy search for water, but there is none. Their tongues are parched with thirst, but I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will make rivers flow on barren heights and springs within the valleys. I will turn the desert into pools of water and the parched ground into springs. I will put in the desert the cedar, the acacia, the myrtle, and the olive. I will set junipers in the wasteland, the fir and the cypress together, so that people may see and know, may consider and understand that the hand of the Lord has done this, that the Holy One of Israel has created it. And that's our vision, is to stand up like a cedar tree in the community, uh, be a place where we can shine God's hope into the community, and people will know that it's because of God that we are there. That everything that we do is motivated because of God, and it's the work that God's doing through us. It's not us, but it's God doing the work through us. And it's something that He's establishing through us. And the hill comes from being like a city on the hill, shining out into the community, really being a beacon of hope to those who are desperate and in need of hope, we want to be that beacon of hope where we can just connect them to God, connect them to Jesus and his teachings. So the location of where we want to be, the area where we want to see it is Bourain, um, Bourain, Cryfontaine on the end of Pinehurst. That area is where we really want to capture because that's one of the fastest growing suburbs. Well, Durbanville is one of the fastest growing suburbs in the Southern Hemisphere. And we see massive growth there, massive potential for new people moving down to Cape Town, people moving into the area where we can just really reach out as soon as possible. So we're looking at trying to get um, a venue at the moment. We're trying to go through Curo. Um, we've put in our proposal, so now we're just waiting and we're praying that that will be accepted. But that's basically the area that we are trying to capture. And we're really trying to get this started as soon as possible next year. Obviously, venue permitting. We would love to try and target February, March, that area, that time, um, but obviously it's venue permitting. So what are some of our needs? Well, the first need is definitely prayer, because this is not just a physical journey we take, it's not just a physical a mission, but it's a spiritual one, because we believe that we are now being called to go and establish a home, a spiritual home for other believers, where we get to go and we join in on the work that's already being done in the community and join in to grow God's kingdom. And when you take on a spiritual mission, there will be spiritual attack. And so we wanna really ask that you'll just continue to pray for us for protection, for God's wisdom and guidance, as there's a lot of big decisions that need to be made in the build up to it, that the things we establish will be in line with God's will and not just our own. But really just pray with us and pray for us. If you wanna know more specific prayer requests, you can always just send me a message um, or you can contact the DBC and they'll put you in touch with me and then I can give you more prayer requests. But prayer is a massive thing and that is the first and most important thing that we can ask for. The second one is obviously financial because there are financial implications to operating costs and establishing a church and even registering the church and things like that. They do require financial backing. We have, ARC has estimated that we'll need about 1.2 to 1.5 million in order to launch and sustain us for the first little bit of the year. And so that's a massive amount of money. That is a huge amount of money. I mean, if any of you have that much money and you just would love to donate it, go for it. But at the same time, we do, I, I personally don't want this to be, and we don't want this to be, you sacrificing the tithe that you're already giving to the local church. So if you're already tithing a certain percentage to DBC, don't stop tithing to DBC. This would be a donation above that, just a generous gift. Anywhere from one rand to a billion rand, whatever you feel the Lord is tugging on your heart and saying, you know what, let that go. Give that as a gift towards Cedar Hill. We would love to accept any amount of financial um, aid and help that you can give us. But yeah, like I said, we don't want this to stop the ties of DBC. We have a love, a deep-rooted love and relationship with DBC, and we would love to see both churches booming and growing through this experience. And that leads me straight to the next one. The next one is we're gonna need people. 
We're going to need people to be part of our launch team, people who can serve. Either say, hey, I've got six months next year where I can help you just get up and running. Or I'll give a year or two years to come and just get things up and running and just be a part of that support structure. Or you'd like to move permanently and just really establish a new spiritual home and, and invite people and grow there. But at the same time, like I say, this is a relationship between us and Durbanville Baptist. Both have to grow. This is not just us coming for a smash and grab. So if the Lord does feel um, or prompt you into leaving, please speak to those who you're already serving. Speak to those in, who are in the ministries, that you, maybe it's a worship team or it's children's ministry or youth ministry or even doing um, ushering at the doors. Whatever it is that you're doing, speak to those in charge. Talk through it um, because obviously yeah, there are implications. But we would love people to come. We'd love to use you, find out your spiritual gifts and your passions and use that to grow the kingdom because we want to plug people in so that they can grow using their spiritual gifts. But those are some of our biggest needs and if you want any more information or you want to find out more about it, you can contact myself um, or contact DBC and they can put you in touch with me. But really, this is our vision. Um, we believe that we're joining into work that's already being done in the community. This is not us starting something brand new that's never been done before. We are joining in with the churches in the community to establish more spiritual homes, to reach more people. And so, yeah, we would love to have this relationship with you, with the church, and we just pray that, um, yeah, that you'll just join us in whatever way possible. And if you can support us in any way possible, let us know. Thanks.